looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. Alright, pack one, pick one. Got a Dovin, which is fine. Uh, Gateway Sneak, decent and common. Not a fan of line up the stage unless we're super hyper aggro. Ragdos. Collision Colossus is quite decent. She'll bring her probably the best common. I think I'll go with the Dovin. I look forward to seeing your mistakes. Probably gonna go with the best common here, Blade Juggler. It's gonna be difficult to combine Frilled Mystic and Dovin in the same deck. No great Azorius flavored card. In this pack. So can go in a few different directions. Summary Judgment and Griffin play well with Dovin. Hacrobats and maybe even the Dead Revels pair well with the Blade Juggler. So those are the cards we're considering here. And we could still end up in like an Orzhov deck with both Juggler and Summary Judgment, maybe splashing for Dovin. So that seems fine. No amazing Ragdos cards here, like there's a Guild Gate, there's a Dead Revels, but we're not giving up on much, whereas there's a Messenger in white, which is quite decent, so I think we'll take that for now. And, alright, Oligarch is kind of a sign that maybe we should move into Black-White. Courier is a playable Azorius card, don't love any of these other ones, so I think we'll take the Oligarch and then see if we can make Black-White happen. Could maybe splash a bit of blue. Inside could be worth splashing, otherwise we could take a Panther that's fine in black-white. It's a pretty late Cure the Critics, although well, it's not easy for us to take that here. We're maybe looking at a Slime Bind, maybe a Crocodile, not exciting cards. guess Slime Bind is the most realistic option. Not much here, maybe the Thought Collapse, like we could still be blue-white. Like, Oligarch is not a card we want to splash. Blade Juggler we can potentially splash. And we wield Collision Colossus. Azorius Locket, Smite made a cut. Nidosaurus is pretty medium. Blade Brand can be playable. Probably just take the Lockets. Don't mind the Fairy Duelist if we're gonna be blue as one of our main colors. Like, we see more Azurius than Orzov at this point. Might use a shield as an alternate win condition. Could play nicely alongside a high alert. Nothing here that we want. I guess if we pick up a high alert, we might want the petitioners. Alright, so not a great first pack, but we've got a removal spell, a bit of card draw, and a decent planeswalker. What did we open? Some goodies. Don't think glass is great. Don't have a ton of synergy with it. Uh, Exaltation can be a good card, but then we need uh, to have a lot of creatures, which we seem to be a bit more controlling than that. I guess it plays well with Dovin, but it's kind of, uh, kind of a build-around card if we want to take it here. Need to make sure to have a lot of cheap cards so we're had on board and have plenty of creatures for the Exaltation once we start attacking, so it's probably at its best in like an Orzhov deck with a lot of token makers. Could consider another Blade Juggler and then splash it, or we can just take a Chillbringer, which is in blue, which seems like a safer pick. Alright, Lumbering Battlement is pretty good. Even if we just get rid of one creature, it's a pretty sizable threat. And just gotta hope our opponent doesn't have enchantment-based removal to lock the creature that's exiled underneath the battlement. But maybe we can pick up a bounce spell to then reset it. And especially nice if we end up with some enter the battlefield abilities. Alright, some good options here. Tithe Taker is a solid 2-drop. Azurius Knight Arbiter is a nice win condition. Same with like the Sphinx, Assus Capture is a nice counter spell. Uh, I think it's between Arbiter and Tithe Taker here. Looking at our curve, already have two 5-drops, maybe a Juggler on the splash. So it's looking more like we're straight Azorius and we're probably not gonna need Oligarch. Not sure yet if we're gonna dip into black for the Blade Juggler, could be worth it. 
I think the Tithe Taker might be more needed than the Arbiter since we already have these powerful fives. But I do think Arbiter is usually the more powerful card. All right, well, if we take the Angel now, we can potentially still end up with like three or four gates and make it worthwhile. Like a 3-4 flyer for 6 isn't that much worse than what you would usually pay. And if we can gain maybe 4 or 6 life, then it's definitely worth it. Alternatively, we can just take the guild gate right now to just fix our mana. But I think the angel's enough of a payoff that we should try to take it and make it work. And here we could take a wall if we're on the mill plan with the Screaming Shield. We could take another Duelist, although it's not at its best here. Don't have any payoffs for Flyers. And we're not an aggressive deck that forces the opponent into situations where the Duelist is good. Could just take a Code of Constraint as kind of a cantrip, but I, I think I like the wall. Plays well with our Screaming Shield, just a good blocker on turn 2. And here we could take the Prying Eyes as kind of a way to refuel since we don't have much card draw outside of these Sphinxes inside. Could be okay. Otherwise a Locket could be fine, some playable 2-drops. Could also splash for the Thrall, but we don't have any mana fixing yet, so... Like, we're in the middle of pack 2 and we don't have any mana fixing whatsoever. So splashing the black cards is probably not too realistic at this point. I think I'm just taking the Prying Eyes. Now we can take the Lockets. Humongolus could be fine as just a blocker, but it's definitely weaker than a Knight Arbiter would have been. Uh, not a fan of the Sage's Row, but if we just want a random 2-drop it could do. Like if we somehow open a High Alert, then the Humongolus would be quite good. Although we still don't have a ton of creatures to synergize with it. I think I'll take the 2-drop. Alright, could take another Prying Eyes. I don't think we have enough creatures for the Sentinel's Mark to be great. Might play another Prying Eyes. The Scope of Empire is pretty medium. Alright, some decent options here. Messenger, Forbidding Spirits. Probably want the Messenger, don't have much at 4. Could use another Flyer. Bit easier on the mana. Since we don't have any mana fixing yet, so double white on turn 3 is not the easiest. I doubt we'll play the Veteran, but... If we need a 3-drop, we'll have it there. Nothing here. Alright, so our deck is pretty mediocre so far. Hopefully the last pack can give us some good removal. Could use some additional Summary Judgment, some Law Mages Bindings, some Bound Spells, and maybe a High Alert that we can build around near the end here. All right, this is a pretty good pack to open. Uh, how many multicolors do we have for Tome? Not that many. We've got Dovin and Insight, and that's it, so probably not looking at that. But uh, Sphinx of New Prav is excellent. Uh, Knight Arbiter would also be great. Drake might also be decent. Probably taking the Sphinx here. And then we really want to prioritize picking up some Azorius Guild Gates to make it easier to cast our spells and make our Angel better. I'm not going to say no to another Chillbringer. And there's not much else here. Like, Skidril can be fine. Duelist might make the cut as well, but... I think Chillbringer is a bit more exciting. Third pick, Gate Colossus. Although there is also an Azorius Knight Arbiter in the pack. The problem here is that we don't have a single gate. And an 8 mana Gate Colossus isn't great. Usually want to be paying like 5 or 6. So probably just taking the Knight Arbiter. Even though we still do want to maybe pick up some gates for the Angel, if we don't end up with any gates, or maybe just one gate, I might leave the Angel in the sideboard. Already have plenty of Prying Eyes. I don't think Quench would be great in our deck. Could take the Ors of Guild Gates just as a gate for the Angel, or in case we want to splash black. But uh, right now it doesn't look like we're going to splash black. Already have a Quench in the sideboard. I guess there's an Orator as well which might be better than like a Sage's Row. Uh, not much here. Take a Thought Collapse, could help with our mill plan. Alright, it's a bit late for the High Alert. Had we seen it earlier, we could have built around it a bit better. Right now it's not looking great. It's okay with the wall. It's 
slight improvement for the messengers, but overall, I, I guess it's fine with Arbiter, but like we have maybe two, maybe three creatures that benefit from the high alert. Otherwise, it makes some of our creatures worse. We just weren't able to build around it enough. Like, it does play well with the Screaming Shield, but the Screaming Shield by itself with double Thought Collapse and a Wall of Lost Thoughts is already a win condition in itself, so we don't need a High Alert as well. I would rather just take the Guild Gate to make our mana better. Take another Messenger. Doubt we'll need this many Lockets. It's a lot of uh, late Sorrow Form Hybrids. All right. So not a great deck, but could be playable. So the question is, do we need Screaming Shield as a win condition? We have three Messengers, two Chillbringers, a Knight Arbiter. Uh, I don't think we're playing the Angel. So we do have some Flyers to close out the game. Dovin as well. Don't know if we really need the, the Shield. I think we have enough flyers to help us close out the game that we don't need this. And looking at the rest of our deck, like the wall is still fine if we just need a blocker on the ground, but it doesn't like contribute to our aggressive plan. And our deck can definitely curve out somewhat aggressively. Although I guess we have a lot of counter spells as well. Not excited about the veteran, but I might play it anyway. Could shave another locket. I think I like the Prying Eyes 17 lands and then use Prying Eyes to discard additional lands in the late game. I might actually play the Quench, since Quench plus Prying Eyes is also a combo we can discard Quench in the late game. So I'm not sure if we need the wall if we don't have high alert and if we don't plan to mill the opponent. And then two more cuts. So I think I like double Prying Eyes, I think I like at least two lockets, could shave one. Uh, I think I like the Quench when we're playing the Prying Eyes. So. Let's say we shave a locket, then we need to make one more cut. Um, I think I like Slimebind in this deck because we have so many flyers, because normally the drawback of Slimebind is that you shrink down an opposing creature, but then it turns into a chump blocker. But if we're flying in the air and we use Slimebind on a ground creature, then the drawback isn't really there since we can just fly over and still get in the damage. So Slimebind is a good combo with flyers, so I think I like it here, otherwise we're a bit removal light. Veteran isn't great, but it's just a 3-drop, otherwise we're a bit lacking at 3. In terms of proactive plays, could just be the Veteran. Alright, and then the mana distribution seems pretty even. We do need double blue, double white for Sphinx, double blue for Thought Collapse. So if we're favoring any color, it would probably be blue. Do we want to go 9 islands, 7 planes? Hmm, probably not. We do want to play these on turn two. We do also have double locket for fixing, so we should be fine. So let's choose some basic lands. Let's see here. This is a nice Azorius themed land. All right. How do we call this? All right, uh, sure. Need a second blue source, but uh, we're on the draw. Turn one footlight fiend is not what we want to see. Alright, draw another Thought Collapse. Well, if we draw an island, we could be fine. If we don't, we're in trouble. A Locket would also be fine. I think I'm blocking. They can't kill the token, but they can still enable Spectacle for a Juggler. It's gonna be a Vandal instead.
While Slimebind stops the Vandal from dealing damage, it doesn't stop it from letting the opponent loot, so it's not a great answer. But once we get the Arbiter or the Sphinx down, we can prevent the damage. So, I think I'll still Slimebind here. Because we might end up being pretty far behind by the time we find a second blue source. Dagger caster to clean up the spirits. Dovin. Well, Dovin's pretty bad here, not gonna lie. I think I'm gonna hold on to Dovin. Sadly, Inheritance slipped through the cracks since we didn't have double blue, but now we get to resolve whatever we want. Uh, I think Sphinx makes the most sense just because it's the most likely to stick around. And then next turn we can maybe play Dovin with Sphinx as a good creature to protect him. Also just applies the most pressure, which is what we need when facing Inheritance. I think I'm blocking the Vandal. That way we don't get destroyed by a combo trick as much. And we still prevent them from looting in the future. Chillbringer is useful, so we'll definitely attack. And then the question is, do we Chillbring the Grudian? Do we play Arbiter or do we play Dovin? And then next turn we can maybe start getting some life with Dovin. Theater of Horrors. Opponent's got some powerful late game enchantments here. Would have loved another island so we could play Dovin and keep up Thought Collapse. So right now we're dealing 7. Could be worth it to just keep up Thought Collapse anyway. Since we are technically ahead on board, even if it's not by much. And then wait until we find another island before we play Dovin and still keep up Thought Collapse. Could also tap out for the Arbiter, just add another threat to the board. What are we doing with this Grudian? Probably just take two and then use Dovin to offset the life loss. Think I'm probably playing the Arbiter. Can't really afford to do nothing. And then hope uh, they don't play anything too powerful here. They might not be able to sack the inheritance in time. I think we gotta block the dagger caster here. They attacked with a dagger caster into the Sphinx a few turns ago. So that could indicate any number of combo tricks. I don't think we can afford to take four. Yeah, this is bad if they have a blade brand specifically, but I think it's still the way to go. Since keeping the Sphinx is pretty important. And then if they use a Blade Brand this turn, next turn we can potentially block the Dagger Caster with the Sphinx. Because then they'll have used their combo trick, hopefully. And if they let it happen, that's fine. Alright, Grotestomize that one, that's fine. Alright, and there's Islands, perfect. No blocks. The facts can't be denied. I am beaten. All right, so we're on the board. Well, definitely wish we had more uh, islands now. Although this hand just needs to draw a single islands for this insight and we'll, we'll be fine. 
We've got two lockets to draw towards as well. So between the nine blue sources and the two lockets, we've got 11 blue sources. So we should find one by turn four. Oh, that Pegasus is pretty annoying. I think I'm just gonna keep up Duelist and then inside end of turn. The life gain's probably not relevant enough here. That's fine. That's a great target for the Duelist to ambush. So we either take two or we just make the trade happen. I think we're fine with the trade. That's again, the duelist can kind of block all the one ones afterwards. And Rester's zeal. So if we slime bind the ministrants, then our tithe taker doesn't die. Their ministrant doesn't die. And it would be stuck as kind of an 0 1 creature that we don't have to attack into since their win conditions are all flyers. Or we can just let this happen. Tithe Taker dies, we get a 1-1. One, one. I don't think we care enough to save the Tithe Taker here. I would rather just Sphinx is in sight. So because we have the 1-1 one, one token to block the Caracal, I don't think we have to keep up Duelist here and I'm fine tapping out for Arbiter. And then if we can untap with the Arbiter in play, we'll be in great shape because then we have a win condition in play. And then a ton of instants we can play reactively. Could make this block. And pump spells don't really wreck us. And again, the one once we can answer with the Duelist afterwards. So this seems fine now. I guess we can play the orator. All right. Panther, that's fine. Trades for the orator. No, that's not fine. I'm okay with the trade. Even though Duelist can block the spirits next turn. Our 1-1 one -one isn't going to do much in the face of Pegasus anyway. So might as well do some... Damage control in case they deal with the Duelist. Dovin's pretty good. Although, do we want to play him now? If we play Dovin now, we tap out of Thought Collapse, but we do still get to keep up Duelist. Feels like we should probably wait until we hit another island. Now the interesting question is if our opponent makes a move with the spirit token, do we flash in the duelist? Or do we keep up thought collapse? Because if we are going to flash in duelist anyway, we probably should have played Dovin. Could also block the panther. And then if they give it death touch, we can flash in duelists to kill it for free. And then we'll have duelist for future turns to block the spirit token. I guess that makes the most sense. Because it also forces them to tap a black mana, so they can't do anything too scary. If we flashed in the duelist before blockers, then we could have potentially also killed the spirit token for free. But then our opponent could have also 
done something different this turn where they maybe don't give the Panther Death Touch and then tap out for a scary 5 or 6 drop. Alright, so now what? Probably just keep a Prying Ice Thought Collapse. Orator is also pretty good in combination with Dovin, gains a ton of life. And that's kind of the scary card I was talking about. I think I would rather counter that. So as it stands, we're pretty far ahead. But we are out of counter spells now. I think we just Chillbringer, and the next turn we can Dovin plus Slimebind. I would rather get on the board before we Prying Eyes. Alright, Ponon packs it up. Yeah, might actually add another island. It's been two games now where we... We had double blue, but we kind of want a triple blue so we could do multiple things in the same turn with Thought Collapse. Alright. Hand seems fine, bit heavy on the Prying Ice perhaps. But we're on the play, which makes up for it. The Sphinx doesn't make uh, abilities more expensive, so we are taking three. So we've got some flyers in play. Next turn we get to Prying Eyes. Hopefully they don't do anything too scary. Renthorn is pretty scary. It's like at least a 7 out of the scary scale. It's pretty good too. Do we want to main phase this or do we just prying eyes end of turn? I think we prying eyes on the end of turn. Keep the messenger back so we can at least uh, block the shaman if that gets in there. Probably just take 5 from the Renthorn, could also chump it with the messenger. We'll see. Opponent's got 6 mana. Savage Smash. So what can we find with Insight that would save us here? Slimebind, minus 4, 3. Slimebind would still not be enough. Quench, we do have a Quench in the deck, so that would be decent, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to go for it here, since if this resolves, we're in trouble. All right. Chillbringer buys us a bit of time, but we're at two here. So it only helps so much. Can't afford to attack. We're dead to basically anything. 
Yeah, that's uh, definitely something. Oh well, double run torn sandwich smash was pretty good. Alright, hand seems fine. Turn 2 Slimebind, turn 3 Locker, turn 4 Night Harbiter. Maybe even a Sage Row on 2 here. Alright, I think I want one land, but not both. That's fine. Didn't think I want to trade 2 damage for 3 damage here. Ouch. Well, I guess we missed out on 2 damage. So be it. This is way more mana efficient than playing Messenger, and this way we get to go Messenger Slime Bind next turn. Even though the Arbiter is somewhat likely to die here. Ah, Grotus Demise is so painful on the Arbiter. Grotus Demise on like Arbiter or Mammoth Spider, always extra painful. Probably should have kept up basic islands to represent essence capture. That's an interesting one. Not what I would expect out of like your typical Ragdos aggro deck. But maybe that's not what our opponent's playing. Alright, well. I guess we'll just play another messenger. If the first one was able to hold them off, then the second one should do the same. And then we can save the Chillbringer until we need to actually tap something down. I think I'm still playing my land for now. Like, we kind of want to save it if we find a Prying Eyes. Um, but our deck is pretty mana-intensive, we might want to sag the Locket soon. Alright. I think I block like this, like we could trade for the Infiltrator. Could slime bind the Infiltrator right now. Or keep it if they have a trick. Kinda wanna keep my flying board presence. So we'll see what they do. If they do nothing, we can just slime bind the Infiltrator. Cause slime binding something else here means that the Infiltrator gets to sacrifice it and become unblockable for a turn, which isn't great. Sky Tether the Messenger. Alright, now we get to keep up Thought Collapse and then Sack Lock at end of turn. And then Messenger can attack since the other one can block the Dagger Caster. Opponents playing white as well, so I'm kind of terrified of a Ethereal Absolution soon. They're Junk Trolling back Sage's Row. Strange. Well, gotta counter that one. Can lock it down with Chillbringer for a turn, but it's not gonna be enough. So we're starting to see why they're playing white. I guess we'll go all in here. Might as well tap down a dagger caster. I don't think tapping down junk troller is relevant enough. Not a sky tether. Alright. Well, I 
I guess we still get to get in for two. Got more flyers on the way. Thought collapse up. Inside to refuel, so we're not in a bad spot here. Transports. Like, we can chum block the transport for a while, and we can even trade for Chillbringers. I don't think we need to. Thought Collapse plus the Duelist can also maybe mess up their attack with it, or the tokens. So we'd rather keep Thought Collapse for something that really wins them in game on the spot. Probably just gonna attack for two, say go. Also, if uh, we chum block with Messenger, we get another Flyer to increase our clock. So for now we could just chum block with the messenger. I think that's probably better. Carry an imp. I think I'm countering that actually. Because it blocks all our flyers at the moment. And the life gains also knowing. And then we can still Sphinxes in sight. Like, if we flash in a Duelist, it doesn't really speed up our clock significantly. So I think I'd rather still in sight. Dovin's excellent. So we get to Dovin, three, four. I guess we don't have the mana for Prying Eyes. I think I'm still playing out a land, since we're likely to draw more lands with Prying Eyes anyway. Well, let's hope our opponent doesn't uh, play like an Ethereal Absolution here. I did actually mean to make a token there, but this is fine. Let's see what they attack here. Attack Dovin. Could just let that happen, honestly. If we block with the Chillbringer, they get two Spirit Tokens, which can block. I'm fine using Dovin as kind of a life buffer. And then sag the lock at the end of turn. All right, those are both excellent. This is no mere trinket. I think I'm just gonna pass, and then I'm fine if Dovin dies, we've got lethal in the air, opponent explodes, alright. Yeah, the lockets are pretty decent, especially if we've got a, a few instants that we can keep up alongside them. Could potentially play the wall, like, the Savant hasn't been too impressive so far. So I might actually just want a wall as a better blocker on the ground. The Savant just doesn't get in any damage. Sure. Descent might have preferred the uh, Savant, but... Probably should have just played the wall anyway there. Not sure why I skipped through my turn. It's not like we're expecting any hasty creatures. I 
I guess we're playing around dead revels by not milling them yet. Alright, so a turn four Sphinx. Not the easiest to deal with, hopefully. And before Embrace, making a sacrifice a creature. Could be a final payment, paying five life. Oh boy. Why? <laughs> Could Dovin make a token? I think I'd rather Messenger. So I would like to keep up Thought Collapse. So I guess we can just play Wall, keep up Thought Collapse, and then if we draw any land we get to go Dovin, keep up Thought Collapse. Alright, some good cards milled. I look forward to seeing your mistakes. We're trying to keep up with this uh, inheritance thanks to our Dovin. It's pretty good. Want to keep the slime bind for a potential flyer here. Duelist can come in handy against the enforcer. Could also slime bind the enforcer right now. Although, what happens if your opponent plays like a not a grasping thrall? Then we're in a bit of trouble. But I do want to be able to maybe play the prying eyes next turn. And if we put a wall on the blade juggler, then we don't have a good block for the enforcer. So I might actually do this anyway. Now if they have a final payment, we're going to be sad. I'm inspired by a good assault. And we'll play the land so we can prying eyes end of turn. Hopefully find some more action. No final payments, that's good. Ooh, that's pretty good too. So, do we have any bounce spells in our deck? I don't think we do. Do have summary judgment, which can potentially kill it. Put on tops both cards. It's not a good sign. Not necessarily close to milling them. Well, I know what I'm discarding. Don't need to gate for any reason. Alright, let's draw some cards. Alright, Battleman could be pretty sweet with a wall. Not just a gadget, but ingenuity. Do we send in a messenger too? I think so, like I'm kind of assuming a Dovin's gonna die anyway here. Can maybe use the duelist to kill their token if they try and block. Alright, they did also have a final payment, so they had everything here. Fair enough. So now we do have a token back on defense. And I'm probably gonna use duelist to blow up one of these blocks.
think I'm still fine playing a land. Our life total is pretty high still. Battlement is going to be able to block the scavenger if we make it big enough. So I don't hate just like chomping with the spirit here necessarily. And then next turn we can play Battlement, getting rid of at least one of the two cards here. And then keep Dovin in play. Because I'm probably minusing Dovin first here. That's a good sign. Not an oligarch. Alright, so we'll make a token. You're doing me a favor. Then we can attack with duelists. Could also attack with a token. Because we're definitely getting rid of the duelists. Or, well, one of these two, since we want to be able to make wall big enough to block scavenger. Would be bad if they have a sky tether. I guess Sky Tether isn't the end of the world. It's mostly like Law Mage's Binding, which they're not gonna have. I think I'm just sending the Duelist and then... I think I'm exiling both the Wall and the Duelist. Have an extra pair of creatures back to protect Dovin. Hope they didn't draw anything too powerful here. That's fine. I think we're fine attacking with battlements. They have to put a lot of stuff in front of it if they want to kill it. Alright, so we get to kill a bunch of stuff, 8 power. So how about Scavenger, Juggler, Oligarch? Want to put the Scavenger first in case I did give it plus 2 plus 2 somehow. Put on down to 9 cards here. So they're pretty close to getting milled out. We milled another Inheritance and the Dead Revels, two pretty relevant cards. Still got a Dovin in play. Chillbringer to tap down Messenger. That's fine. I think we minus this turn and then next turn we can plus and get a pretty big chunk of damage in. Now we'll keep lands in hand now, I think, in case we draw another Prying Eyes. Got two of those in the deck. And then we can discard a few lands. Although there's also the argument of like casting the Prying Eyes and wanting a bunch of mana afterwards. So we're probably going to see a trade. Not sure if our opponent has many win conditions left here. Quench also not too useful here. But again, can maybe discard it to a prying eyes. So now I think I'll... Play my land since we've got another card to discard. These contraptions have their uses. Dovin's gonna gain a ton of loyalty. Alright, so opponent's not too far from getting milled out. And we're ahead on board. Still at a very healthy life total. 
So this inheritance hasn't done too much for the opponent. Do we want to ultimate a Dovin here? Why not? Gotta be careful that we don't deck ourselves. Let's read it one more time. Top 10 cards, put three of them in hand and rest on the bottom. Let's go for it. No Alright, so we definitely want Thought Collapse. Definitely want Arbiter and then... Probably just Messenger over Judgment. So we want to keep up Thought Collapse. I guess we get to play Arbiter. Or we can Chillbringer, it's maybe better. Alright, we've got Quench and Thought Collapse at the ready. We're kind of forcing the opponent to sacrifice their inheritance soon. Should be game. Alright, it took us a while, but in the end we got there. Pretty close to milling them too. If we resolve the Thought Collapse, they don't have many cards left. Alright, so we're 4 and 1. Alright, let's keep it up. Up against Simic. That's fine. Wall's a good blocker here, protecting Dovin. So I feel comfortable running out Dovin. It was also reasonable to plus Dovin there so it doesn't die to the courier since now we're probably maybe forced to chump. Hybrid. Well, we've got a Chillbringer incoming. No attacks. Well, that lines up great for us. Griffin. Might be able to ultimate Dovin again. There is elegance in simplicity. Eight loyalty, so even if it gets dinged for one, can still ultimate next turn. Ooh, Simic Ascendancy, that's a scary card. 
We better close out this game quickly. So I think this makes sense, because this way if they want to put a counter on hybrid to attack Dovin for more, then they can't adapt it anymore. Don't want to block Chillbringer on one of the two powered creatures, otherwise Ascendancy can finish it off. Although maybe it's worth it, like, if we force them to pump the hybrids, then we can still ultimate Dovin, and we get rid of a hybrid at the cost of a Chillbringer. Alright. Like, we're not forced to ultimate Dovin here, but I think it's worth it. Get our cards while we can, because we're kind of low on action. Alright, so what do we want? Probably the Battlement. Probably the Judgment. And probably the Thought Collapse. And then we get to attack for 5. Six, seven, eight, and then we can play battlements and keep up thought collapse. Question is how many do we exile here? Just a wall or also the Chillbringer? I think we also get rid of Chillbringer, because Chillbringer gets blocked by Courier anyway. So just want to make a giant battlement here that we can protect with Thought Collapse. And if they start pumping the Griffin, we can maybe summary judgment it. But I'm waiting until they put another counter on it here. So they're completely tapped out. We could have responded to the first pump. That way if they tried to pump again it would still die. But let's say they have a bounce spell for the battlement. We might not want to have that happen. Ice everywhere we're probably going to have to counter. Because it can steal the battlement. Like we can steal it back. But I don't know if that's the game we want to be playing right now. Still seems... Like, it's safer to just get rid of it. It's a good one, too. So now we'll kill the griffin before it does too much damage. Like, if there was anything we could draw towards with Locket to win the game right now, I would definitely consider doing so. But I don't think we have anything cheap that can bounce the... Savant or kill it since we've already played both Chillbringers. Don't think there's anything else in our deck that could help in that situation. Let's just double check. Yeah, I don't think we had anything. Alright, sweet, so we're 5 and 1. The sand seems fine. Uh oh. Well, we don't have many early plays here. So hopefully we can catch back up. Oh boy. So I was going to play the Sphinx, but now I'm not so sure. I might be better off playing Messenger, which can trade off for the Steeple Creeper. Or we can just take like 8 damage or whatever, and then next turn maybe use Duelist to ambush, but that's going to be a pretty mana inefficient turn. If we play Messenger, then next turn we can also play Big Battlement. I think I like Messenger and then try and trade off for the Creeper, which is kind of scary. And if they have some sort of enchantment removal spell that they're splashing for, then Battlement can get rid of the messenger and be a fine blocker. Alright, so we're a bit behind, but our hand's pretty solid. Now what do we want to do? 
Could play Knight Arbiter, which blocks a Guardian even if they adapt. Still happy to trade Messenger for either Creeper or Griffin, and Creeper also gets blocked by the Arbiter if they don't have any tricks. It feels like they might be splashing for some Law Mage's Binding type cards, which means we want to save the Battlement until after those get played. So I think for now we'll just play the Arbiter. And then next turn we can double spell Sphinx and Duelist. So they probably have some sort of trick. So I kind of like putting the Knight Arbiter in front of the Growth Chamber Guardian, which forces them to adapt if they don't want to lose it, and then put Messenger in front of either Griffin or Steeple Creeper to make that trade happen. And then if they spend mana saving Guardian, then maybe the other trade does happen. Is Steeple Creeper or Griffin more problematic? I think Griffin, since if we can trade that off, we clear a path for the Sphinx. Oh yeah, I remembered the opponent had had uh, two Guardians. Alright. So that happened. So had we blocked the Steeple Creeper with the Knight Arbiter, this would have been a lot more backbreaking than it ended up being. We're still pretty far behind here, but might be able to recover. I think I like Sphinx keep up Duelist here. And I'll keep back the token. This could potentially turn out pretty well for us. Because we could double block the Griffin with token and Duelist and shrink something down and block it with the Sphinx. So now I think we want to block Growth Chamber Guardian with Sphinx. Although we kind of want to flash in the Duelist beforehand so we can double block the Creeper as well. And make sure this doesn't get countered. Well, that went pretty well. They, of course, still have a Griffin, which is kind of an issue, but Chillbringer makes that less of a problem at the moment. Opponent keeping up all their mana. So maybe they want to counter the Arbiter on the way down. Think we'll lead with the Chillbringer. If they want to counter this instead, that's fine. Play my Landing Case of Quench. Even though they could have quenched the Duelist. They don't have double green for Frilled Mystic, so that's not it. Right, nothing. So now they're pretty far behind all of a sudden. Do want to make sure we don't get like Wombo comboed out, but we still have a Vigilant Sphinx on defense. We can hit for seven. And then what do we add to the board? I think we still save the battlement for post potential enchantments. Attack with both here. That also forces them to Give Creeper flying if they want to fly over the Arbiter. That's fine. Still no double green over there. No attacks from the opponents. But now the Arbiter can start getting in there. Skirial. I think we're fine trading Chillbringer for Griffin. And then could just play a 4-5 Battlement, although it doesn't line up well against the Skitteriel. Could just play Messenger and pass. It's probably the play here. And then I think I'm still playing my land despite having some loot effects in the deck should have definitely kept up double blue here. Because we might want to like... 4 mana draw 2 and play Battlement in the same turn. Could jump with the Messenger, but then... Don't have a good target for Battlements. So I think we just take 3, potentially 5. Because we're going to want to be able to keep up the ability on Steeple Creeper to give it flying as well. Which now they might not be able to do. So we can attack with everyone. Bowen probably has to jump with the duelists. We get to play battlements. Getting rid of messenger. And have another big blocker. And we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
Again, probably should have kept up double blue here, but... So it goes. Opponent finally able to adapt their sword form hybrids. Creeper to block the Sphinx. But now they can block the battlements easily. It's gonna be a double block. So if we kill the eel, they still have to sink mana into pumping the hybrid, which we can easily block with our Dovin token. So I think I would rather take out the eel than take out the hybrid, even though hybrid's gonna be a bit bigger later. Still keep land in hand now, I think, because of prying eyes. Although it is a double-edged sword, because you never know if you're gonna need an extra land after playing the prying eyes. Hybrids going face. If they adapt and sink six man into pumping this, we still have lethal on the way back. And this kind of forces them to. Sweet. All right. So we're six and one. Let's see if we can close this one out with seven wins. Fine opening hands. Some good early plays, and then hopefully we'll draw into the more expensive cards. Got plenty of card draw to draw towards as well. And Tithe Taker can be pretty good against opposing counterspell decks. So we could bait out with a wall here, but I don't think they would counter the wall, so... Might as well Tithe Taker, force them to have the Quench if they have it. And if they have Thought Collapse instead, then it's gonna be one more expensive. Well, Gatebreaker Ram's kind of an issue. Wish we had kept up Quench now. Not too many 3-drops that are so high impact that we need to counter them, but Gatebreaker Ram's definitely one of them. Alright, let's play the wall. Could also keep up Quench, but then we might take a beating from the Ram. So they haven't had an opportunity to play a second gate yet, in which case Wall's not gonna block anyway. So I might just say go. Keep up Quench and the next turn we can play Wall, keep up Quench. Alright, so no second gates, which means that our destroyed tapped creature could still answer the ram. It's gonna be a Thought Collapse instead. So we'll play wall, keep up quench. So opponent is blue green, splashing white. From the looks of it. Can't quench that one. So opponents might have been sandbagging that one to play around quench. So we gotta try and find our prying eyes so we can eventually discard this quench, which is probably not too useful. So I think I'm gonna tap out for the night since otherwise we're kind of losing from all angles. And then next turn we can start keeping up counter spells while we chip in with our Night Arbiter. Try and find an answer to these creatures. Ooh, Shark to Crab. It's a good one too. Although so is the Sphinx. Ram attacks, they can adapt at instant speed, turning it into a 5-5. What happens if we double block? Then they get to kill one of our creatures and lock one down. This is only referencing spells and not abilities. 
So they could tap down the Sphinx as well. If we double block and they have, let's say, a plus three pump spell, that would be quite bad since we don't get to quench it and they would kill both. So I think I'm taking it here. All right, let's get in there. What happens if our opponent adapts Aramonculus and trades for Sphinx? Are we happy with that? Not ecstatic, but I guess we could just attack with the Knight Arbiter. But if they don't adapt the Aramonculus, they might adapt with the Sharkto Crab instead. So it's, they get to use their mana anyway. And this Aramonculus is kind of going to be an issue. Don't have many answers for it other than Chillbringers. I think I will attack with the Sphinx. Alright, they're not going to give us a chance. Fair enough. Titanic Brawl. We'll quench that. At least a ram's been... Just a 3-3 three, three so far. Hasn't bothered us too much, although there we go, 4-4. Four, four. Bit of hesitation when attacking with a ram. I'm snap blocking, don't really have a choice. Can replay the messenger, keep up thought collapse, but don't have enough power to kill the shark to crab. So we probably just have to chum block it next turn with the wall. Yeah, the early game interactions with Quench did not work in our favor. Also happy to counter this one. No adapting with our homunculus this turn. It's a pretty timely top deck. So we still have a chance. Another shark to crab. <laughs> and the mana to adapt, so that's probably game over here. Although, you're saying there's a chance. So we're definitely getting rid of the Sphinx. Do we get rid of a second creature? I don't think we can afford to. So I think just the Arbiter attacking. All right, got a big blocker on the ground. Can chum block our Monculus if we want to, or take the damage. Ram a 5 5. Just our homunculus attacking. So, what happens if we take it? Then they can put us to 1. Could be fine. Of course, they could have pump spells here as well. If we jump with the messenger, we get a 1 1 token. Could potentially hit them for 3 next turn. If we block the homunculus, we kind of force them to adapt in a way, which could be a good thing. I think I'm blocking. Because if we find an answer for our homunculus, then it doesn't really change our clock, since we still have a two-turn clock here with our evasive creatures. That's a perfect draw. So I think we can afford to get in... I guess we can play Chillbringer pre-combat here, hope it resolves. And then tap down Shartocrab, forcing them to chum block with the Gatebreaker Ram. Which is the biggest threat here. And our opponent packs it in. Wow, what a game. Top decks back and forth. But we got there. Sweet. Alright. Well, we had some rough ones today, but this draft definitely went our way. 
some lucky draws along the way as well. Let's claim our prize. Let's crack some packs. All right, sweet. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.